Hey, y'all. You know what time it is. Ha! Caught it. <laughs> Barely. There we go. Get into it. Hi, y'all. We are back. <laughs> I was going to do this earlier, but I took a nap after work, and then when I got up, I went to go work out a lot longer than what I usually do, and then I came home and showered and relaxed and started getting caught up in my shows, and now I'm here. Uh, hey, y'all. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a really good night. Um, I don't know. Today's been feel it's it's been a really good day. You know, I saw a good acquaintance of mine. One of my old coworkers is back working with us over at the Mills Park Hotel. I'm so excited. She made me cry today. Shout out to Jenny. Love you. Um, yeah. Hi, y'all. Of course, I do not own the music that you are hearing in the background. But that is neither here nor there. I see we have one person joining us. As I always say, y'all, if you ever want to share these videos on Facebook, please do so. If you think that somebody would be interested in listening to a soothing, animated voice, reading classical literature, and even some brand new um, children's novels and stories, please share this. Because this is a fun activity I do. I do not do this for profit. I started this back in March of last year, right when we went into lockdown procedures, here in Ohio at least, and it was a fun activity to get kids to continue to be inspired by education, to fall in love with reading, to fall in love with imagination and building one's repertoire when it comes to language, when it comes to culture, when it comes to well-roundedness in the world that we live in currently um but on a side note prayers to all of the men and women that are serving in afghanistan for all of the civilians that are having to deal with this resurgence of the taliban in kabul um prayers to them legitimate prayers to them i'm not, i don't if anybody knows me enough like i don't like i don't do like a lot of banners around my profile picture no sh first of all let me say there's no shade to anybody that chooses to do that i just choose not to do that because i pray on my own time in my own house on my own turf and sometimes i don't necessarily need a symbol or a moniker to know that i'm supportive of a cause um me speaking out and being aware and being socially conscious is a form of protest and being self-aware. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is I feel for the struggles for these people. I feel for the safety of these people. And, you know, just keep them in your prayers. Whatever uh, religion, denomination, or spirituality that you practice, I respect it. So, without further ado, we will begin. Chapter 3, Looking Glass Insects Of course the first thing to do was to make a grand survey of the country she was going to travel through. It's something very like learning geography, thought Alice as she stood on tiptoe in hopes of being able to see a little further. Principal rivers, there are none. Principal mountains, I'm on the only one. But I don't think it's got any name. Principal towns? Why, what are those creatures making honey down there? They can't be bees. Nobody ever saw bees a mile off. You know. And for some time she stood silent, watching one of them that was bustling about among the flowers, poking its prob proboscis into them, just as if it was a regular bee, thought Alice. However, this was anything but a regular bee. In fact, it was an elephant, as Alice soon found out, though the idea quite took her breath away at first. What enormous flowers they must be, was her next idea. Something like cottages with the roofs taken off and stalks put to them. And what quantities of honey they must make. I think I'll go down and... No, I won't go down just yet. She went on checking herself just as she was beginning to run down the hill and trying to find some excuse for turning shy so suddenly. It'll never do to go down among them without a good long branch to brush them away. And what fun it'll be when they ask me how I liked my walk. I shall say, oh, I liked it well enough. Here came the favorite little toss of the head. Only, 
It was just so dusty and hot, and the elephants did tease so. Oh, I'm a little too far back. I'm sitting all the way back here like a hooligan with no job. Pardon me, sorry, y'all. I think I'll go down the other way, she said after a pause. And perhaps I may visit the elephants later on. Perhaps I do so want to get into that third square. So with this excuse, she ran down the hill and jumped over the first of the six little brooks. Tickets, please, said the guard, putting his head in the window. In a moment, everybody was holding out a ticket. They're about the same size as the people. Oh. Well, that was a bit of a jump in the story. Pardon me, y'all. Well, if you could see there, those are talent. Those little dots are a break in between, a transition into the next scene. Tickets, please, said the guard, pointing his head in the window. In a moment, everybody was holding a ticket. They were about the same size as the people and quite seemed to fill the carriage. Now then, show your ticket, child. The guard went on looking angrily at Alice, and a great many voices all said together, like the chorus of a song, thought Alice. Don't keep him waiting, child, why his time is worth a thousand pounds a minute. Don't keep him waiting, child, this, why his time is worth a thousand pounds a minute. Don't keep him waiting, child, why his time is worth a thousand pounds a minute. A thousand pounds a minute. I'm afraid I haven't got one, Alice said in a frightened tone. There wasn't a ticket office where I came from. And then again, the chorus of voices went on. There wasn't a room for where she came from. The land there is worth a thousand pounds an inch. The land there is worth a thousand pounds an inch. The land there is worth a thousand pounds an inch. The land there is worth a thousand pounds an inch. Don't make excuses, said the guard. You should have bought one for the engine driver. And once more, the chorus of voices went with the man that drives the engine. Why, the smoke alone is worth a thousand pounds a puff. <laughs> the man that drives the engine. Why, the smoke alone is worth a thousand pounds a puff. <laughs> why, the engine driver. Why, the smoke alone is worth a thousand pounds a puff. Alice thought to herself that there's no use in speaking. The voices didn't join in this time as she hadn't spoken, but to her great surprise, they all fought in chorus. I hope you understand what thinking in chorus means, for I must confess that I don't. Better say nothing at all. Language is worth a thousand pounds of war. Better to say nothing at all. Language is worth a thousand pounds of thought. Better to say nothing at all. Language is worth a thousand pounds of puff. A word. <laughs> I dream about a thousand pounds tonight. I know I shall, thought Alice. All this time, the guard was looking at her first through a telescope, then through a microscope, and then through an opera glass. At last, he said, You're traveling the wrong way. And shut up the window and went away. So, there is Alice in this train carriage because the Red Queen told her she would have to take the train. Look at the interesting passengers we have. We have a man in a paper suit and an old goat. So young a child, said the gentleman sitting opposite to her. He was dressed in white paper. Ought to know where, which way she's going, even if she doesn't know her own name. A goat that was sitting next to the gentleman in white shut his eyes and said in a loud voice, She ought to know her way into the chain office if she doesn't know her alphabet. There was a beetle sitting next to the goat. It was a very queer carriage full of passengers altogether. And as the rule seemed to be that they should all speak in turn, he went on with, She'll have to go back. From here as luggage. Alice could see who was sitting beyond the beetle, but a hoarse voice spoke next. Change engines, it said, and there it choked. <coughs> and it was obliged to leave off. It sounds like a horse, Alice thought to herself, and an extremely small voice close to her ear said, You might make a joke on that. Something about horse and horse, you know. <laughs> then a very gentle voice in the distance said, she must be labeled lass with care, you know. And after that, other voices went on. What a number of people there are in the carriage, thought Alice, saying, 
she must go by post. As she's got a head on her, she must be sent as a message by the telegraph. She must draw the train herself the rest of the way, and so on. But the gentleman dressed in white paper leaned forward and whispered in her ear, Never mind what they all say, my dear, but take a return ticket every time the train stops. Indeed, I shan't. Alice said rather impatiently, I don't belong to this railway journey at all. I was in a wood just now, and I wish I could get back there. You might make a joke on that, said the little voice close to her ear. Something about you would if you could, you know. <laughs> don't tease so, said Alice, looking about in vain to see where the voice came from. If you're so anxious to have a joke made, why don't you make one yourself? The little boy sighed deeply. It was very unhappy, evidently. And Alice would have said something pitying to comfort it. If it would only sigh like other people, she thought. But this was such a wonderfully small sigh that she wouldn't have heard it at all if it hadn't come quite close to her ear. The consequence of this was that it tickled her ear very much and it quite took off her thoughts for the unhappiness of the poor little creature. I know you're a friend, the little voice went on. Dear friend, an old friend, and you won't hurt me, though I am an insect. What kind of an insect? Alice inquired a little anxiously. What she really wanted to know was whether it could sting or not, but she thought this would be quite a civil question to ask. Excuse me. What then you don't, the little voice began, when it was drowned by a shill scream from the engine, and everybody jumped up in alarm, Alice among the rest. The horse, who had put his head out of the window, quietly drew it in and said, <coughs> It's only a brook we have to jump over. Everybody seemed satisfied with this, though Alice felt a little nervous at the idea of trains jumping at all. However, it'll take us into the fourth square. That's some comfort, she said to herself. In another moment, she felt the carriage rise straight up into the air, and in a fright she caught at the thing nearest to her hand, which happened to be the goat's beard. But the beard seemed to melt away as she touched it, and she found herself sitting under a tree, while the gnat, for that was what the insect she had been talking to was, was balancing itself on a twig just over her head, fanning her with its wings. It certainly was a very large gnat, but the, about the size of a chicken, Alice thought. Still, she couldn't feel nervous with it after they had been talking together so long. Then you don't like all insects? The gnat went on, as quietly as if nothing had happened. I like it when they can talk, Alice said. None of them ever talk where I come from. What sort of insects do you rejoice in where... You come from <laughs> The gnat inquired. I don't rejoice in insects at all, Alice explained, because I'm rather afraid of them, at least the large kinds. But I can tell you the names of some of them. Of course they answer to their names, the gnat remarked carelessly. I never knew them to do it. What's the use of their having names, the gnat said, if they won't answer to them? <laughs> no use to them, said Alice, but it's useful to the people that name them, I suppose. If not, why do things have names at all? I can't say, the gnat replied. A further on in the wood down there, they've got no names. However, go on with your list of insects. You're wasting time. <laughs> well, there's the horsefly, Alice began counting off the names on her fingers. All right, said the gnat, halfway up that bush, you'll see a rocking horsefly if you look. It's made entirely of wood and gets about by swinging itself from branch to branch. What does it live on? Alice asked with great curiosity. Sap and sawdust, said the gnat. Go on with the list. Alice looked at the rocking horsefly with great interest and made up her mind that it must have just been repainted. It looked so bright and sticky, and then she went on. And then there's the dragonfly. 
look at the branch above your head, said the gnat, and there you'll find a snapdragon fly. Its body is made of plum pudding, its wings of holly leaves, and its head is a raisin burning in brandy. And what does it live on? Alice asked as before. Fermin tea and mince pie, ah, the, Ale- the gnat replied, and it makes its nest in a Christmas box. And then there's the butterfly, Alice went on, after she had taken a good look at the insect with its head on fire, and had thought to herself, I wonder if that's the reason insects are so fond of flying into candles, because they want to turn into snapdragon flies. Crawling at your feet, said the gnat. Alice drew her feet back in some alarm. You may as observe a bread and butterfly. Its wings are thin slices of bread and butter. Its body is a crust, and its head is a lump of sugar. <laughs> and what does it live on? Weak tea with cream in it. So here's a picture of all of these fanciful creatures. So we got the rocking horse fly up top. And then we got the snapdragon fly. And then we have the bread and butterfly. (laughs) Naturally. So its body is a loaf of bread. Mm. A new difficulty came into Alice's head. Suppose he couldn't find any, she suggested. Then it would die, of course. (laughs) No. But that must happen very often, Alice remarked thoughtfully. It always happens, said the gnat. After this, Alice was silent for a minute or two, pondering. The gnat amused itself, meanwhile, by humming round and round her head. At last it settled again and remarked, I suppose you don't want to lose your name, hmm? No, indeed, Alice said a little anxiously. And yet I don't know. The gnat went on in a careless tone. Only think how convenient it would be if you could manage to go home without it. For instance, if the governess wanted to call you to your lessons, she would call out, come here, and then she would have to leave off because there'd be no name to call. (laughs) And, of course, you wouldn't have to go, you know. That would never do, I'm sure, said Alice. The governess would never think of excusing me lessons for that. If she couldn't remember my name, she'd call me Miss, as the servants do. Well, if she said Miss, (laughs) and didn't say anything more, the gnat remarked, of course you'd miss your lessons. (laughs) That's a joke. I wish you had made it. Why do you wish that? It's a very... Why would you wish I had made it? It's a very bad one, Alice asked. But the gnat only sighed deeply, while two large tears came rolling down its cheeks. You shouldn't make jokes, Alice said, if it makes you so unhappy. Then came another of those melancholy little sighs. (sighs) At this time, the poor little gnat really seemed to have sighed itself away. For when Alice looked up, there was nothing whatever to be seen on the twig, and as she was getting quite chilly with sitting still so long, she got up and walked on. She very soon came to an open field with a wood on the other side of it. It looked much darker than the last wood, and Alice felt a little timid about going into it. However, on second thoughts, she made up her mind to go on. For I certainly can't go back. She thought to herself, as this was the only way to the eighth square. This must be the wood, she thoughtfully. She said thoughtfully to herself, where things have no names. I wonder what will become of my name when I go in. I shouldn't like to lose it at all, because they'd have to give me another. And it would most certain to be an ugly one. But then the fun would be trying to find the creature that had got my own name. That's just like the advertisements, you know, when people lose dogs. Answers to the name of Dash, hat on a brass collar. Just fancy calling everything you met Alice to one of them answered. (laughs) Only they wouldn't answer at all if they were wise. She was rambling on in this way when she reached the wood. It looked very cool and shady. Well, at any rate, it's a great comfort, she said as she stepped under the trees. After being so hot to get into the to the into the what 
she would uh, rather surprise and not be able to think of the word. I mean, to get under the... Uh, under the... Under the... This! You know. Putting her hand on the trunk of the tree. What does it call it itself, I wonder? I do believe it's got no name. Why, to be sure it hasn't. She stood silent for a minute, thinking. Then she suddenly began again. That it really has happened, after all. And now, who am I? I will remember if I can. I'm determined to do it. But after being determined didn't help her much, and all she could say after a great deal of puzzling was, L, I know it begins with L. Just then, a fawn came wandering by. It looked at Alice with its large, gentle eyes, but it didn't seem at all frightened. Here there, here then, Alice said as she held out her hand and tried to stroke it, but it only started back a little and then stood looking at her again. All I'm going to say is this could only happen at Yellow Springs. That's all I'm going to say. A little girl walking with a fawn in a forest. It could only happen at Yellow Springs. What do you call yourself? The fawn said at last. Such a soft voice it had. I wish I knew, thought poor Alice. She answered rather sadly. Nothing just now. Think again, it said. That won't do. Alice thought, but nothing came of it. Please, would you tell me what you call yourself, she said timidly. I think that might help a little. I'll tell you if you'll come a little further on, the fawn said. I can't remember here. So they walked on together through the wood, Alice with her arms clasped, clasped lovingly around the fawn's neck, until they came out into another open field, and here the fawn gave a sudden bound into the air and shook itself free from Alice's arms. I'm a fawn, it cried out in a voice of delight. And <laughs> dear me, you're a human child. A sudden look of alarm came into its beautiful brown eyes, and in another movement it darted full speed away. Alice stood looking after it, almost ready to cry with vexation at having lost a dear little fellow traveler so suddenly. However, I know my name now, she said. There's some comfort. Alice. Alice. I won't forget it again. Now, which one of those finger posts ought to I to follow, I wonder? It was not a very difficult decision to answer, as there was only one row through the wood, and the two finger posts both pointed along it. I'll settle it. Alice said to herself, the road divides and they both point into different ways. But this did not seem likely to happen. She went on and on and a long way, but wherever the road divided, there were sure to be two finger posts pointing the same way. One marked to Tweedledum's house and the other to Tweedledee's house. To Tweedledum's house and to the house of Tweedledee. I do believe, said Alice at last, that they live in the same house. I wonder, I never thought of that before, but I can't stay there long. I'll just call and say, how do you do, and ask them the way out of the wood. If I could only get to the eighth square before it gets dark. So she wandered on, talking to herself as she went. On turning a sharp corner, she came upon two little fat men, so subtly that she could not help starting back. But in another moment, she recovered herself, feeling sure that they must be... Tweedledum and Tweedledee. And that is where we will end for tonight. Thank you all so much for joining me, y'all. And thank you all for my friends that have been keeping up with my fitness journey. It took me a lot of confidence build up to even get back into working out. Depression is real. Anxiety is very real. Um, I do suffer from severe depression and anxiety. Um, it's been like that for years for me. Um, it was a few years ago. I was taking 150 milligrams of Zoloft um, for a few years. And that was a bit much for me. But it does help. Um, antidepressants medication does help. It helps balance those, those parameters. So that eventually you can get to a point where you don't need them. And that is where I'm at right now in life. Do I get sad? Absolutely. Do I have panic attacks? Yes. 
Do I have moments where I get so anxious that my leg can't stop shaking? Absolutely. Um, but what I have come to find out about life and about people is that in order for you to be better, you have to want to be better. And so for me to be as expressive as I am in my day-to-day -day life, to work out as much as I do, it's an ownership of myself, taking back the power that I've always had for myself and loving myself just a little bit harder than what I normally would do. Because I've always been the type of person who loves doing for other people and putting my needs on the side. Because I understand that people go through so much stuff behind closed doors that you may not be privy to. And honestly, I would rather do for somebody else that is in need and put my stuff on the side where I can deal with it later. As unhealthy as that sounds, that's just how I've always been. I've always been like that. So for all my lovely friends, which I know my friend Tinu is going to be a little upset with me. So tomorrow is my off day and I'm going to dedicate that time to write letters because I have this amazing set of letters that I can send out to the happy people. If you would like a letter or, hold on, hold on, there's more. If you would like a Studio Ghibli postcard, which has Actually, oh, well, it doesn't have uh, the newest movie that came out. But anyway, it has all of the Studio Ghibli movies up until the latest one from a couple of years ago, which honestly is one of my favorite films of all time. It's called When Marty Was There. I cannot watch that movie without crying at least three different times. It's an amazing film. Um, but yeah, if you would like a postcard from a specific Studio Ghibli movie, or if you would like me to write you a letter of encouragement or just to check on you, please, 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 please message me with your address. I'll pay for the postage, and I will get it out to you. See you next time, y'all. Be safe and stay positive.